Welcome back to the channel guys. I hope you're all doing great. Today I'm over on the test server and I want to talk about this new dungeon. Now, I haven't had a ton of time to play on the test server. Been super busy over the weekend, but this dungeon right here, for one, it's kind of bugged. So if I made a video on it, it's not really going to be relevant in a few days, let alone next week. So there's no real reason to do that. But number two, this dungeon, I don't think it's worth farming for 90% of players. I want to hear you guys' opinions, but if you're going to get hyped about this dungeon and you're going to want to clear it and you're going to start farming it, I want you to realize what you're actually farming for. Let's go ahead and compare these, okay? So the uh, Phantom Shogun's Grove versus Sand Devil's Necropolis. What are you actually getting, okay? So essentially the resources are the same. For Sand Devil, you're getting the same stuff as you would from Shogun's. Let's see if the, the numbers are the same. I don't think they are, but that doesn't really matter to be honest. Um, so 47 and 3, let's see, uh, 47 and 3, so yeah, the numbers actually are the same. So you're dropping the same amount of energy for the same resources. Now I want you to picture what this is for, okay? The Phantom Shogun's Grove is for these pieces right here. These pieces, the necklace, or the, the ring, can ascend to HP, attack, and defense. Do you know what else can ascend to HP, attack, and defense? Well, let's see. HP attack and defense. Your weapon can, okay? Do you ascend your weapon? Is your weapon any priority whatsoever for you to ascend? For me, no. Okay, so the necklace. What can the necklace ascend to? Let's check it out. It can ascend to, well, I already ascended it to HP, and it can give a max of 1224, which, if you are like me, and you ascend a bottom row piece of gear with HP, it can also ascend to 1224. I'm not maxing this out. I don't farm Sand Devils enough, to max out all my flat stat pieces, even if they do kind of make sense. Except for like on my Rotos. My Rotos is an exception because he's a champion who I really want to invest heavily into. Now the banner, what can it ascend to? Go HP, attack and defense, accuracy and resistance. Now how much accuracy and resistance are we looking at? Is it like 100? That'd be crazy. Of course it's not 100. Let's go ahead and see. My Rotos got a resistance banner. So now my Rotos' uh, resistance can be boosted by 29. I would assume the accuracy is the same. Now for the necklace, we got this ascendant to crit damage. This is probably the best stat. So the necklace is going to be able to ascend. Let's go ahead and show that real quick. It's going to be able to ascend HP, attack, defense, and crit damage. So basically, all pieces, the, the ring, it's only going to be HP, attack, and defense. The necklace has the extra chance of getting crit damage, and the banner has the extra chance of getting resistance or accuracy. So the necklace is probably going to be the one that if you're going to ascend anything that you actually want to go for. However, when you compare how much crit damage it actually is, 12%, it doesn't really feel significant. I mean, 12% extra crit damage, yeah, you're going to hit harder. It's going to be better for your champion, but how many necklaces are you going to have to upgrade to actually get that 12% extra crit damage? Unlike the top row pieces of gear, you don't really have to do a ton on top, like the, the, the not the top row pieces of gear, but your actual artifacts, okay? So this stuff that's above the accessories. So these bottom row pieces, they can ascend to speed. That's pretty game-changing, honestly. The chest plate, it can ascend to many different stats, tons of different ones. A lot of them are useless, but some of them are massively impactful attack percentage, and it's like 20% that it ascends to. That's way better than flat attack, flat HP most of the time. Rotos is an example that's kind of an exception to that rule, but majority of the time, that's just going to be way better. And the reason why I say 90% of players are just not going to be farming that dungeon is because 90% of players don't farm enough sand devils to make a huge difference. This is a pair of crit damage gloves that I have that ascend at crit damage. This has more crit damage than the necklace. Okay, it's got like eight more, right? Because the necklace can go to, I think, 12. Is that what I said, or did I say 14? Either way, the necklace, if you need it, yeah. If you're really, really trying to min-max your gear, obviously, yes, you're going to want to go to the Shogun's Grove. But if you're in that group of players who don't have all of your main champion's gear ascended as it is, then you're not one of the players who can really make sense, in my opinion, of farming the Shogun Grove, the Phantom Shogun's Grove. Could be a cool dungeon, but honestly, I think this dungeon is going to be a bigger bait than anything for majority of players. I don't think the rewards justify what you're actually getting from it, to be honest. Now, maybe if they added, like, some extra stuff in here. Maybe if they added, like, I don't know, pages to a book or something, you know? Once you're farming this, maybe you get a page to a book every so often. Yeah, I don't really need the accessory ascensions, but... Maybe after I farm it 100 times, I can get some book. I don't even want to throw numbers out there because I have no clue what would be realistic, but that'd be awesome. That'd make this more worth farming. But at the current time, I feel like the the upgrades are so minuscule. And if you check out the uh, other stats, let's see if I can ascend anything else. Um, so we got the a ring right here. Let's see what we can do with this. Okay, let's go boom. 
what do we get? We get HP, 1224. Now, this is actually reasonable for Rotos because Rotos has not great scaling HP. So this piece is actually pretty good. Like the flat HP, the flat crit damage, that I would work on. But 90% of my other champions, I'm not going to do it for. So very, very select few champions. It's not something at all like Sand Devils, in my opinion, where Sand Devils is worth doing and quite a bit of. Honestly, once you get later in the game, it's worth dumping majority of your energy into because that's going to give you better upgrades then most of the time even drops from dungeons. Like if I get a plus 12 speed to my regeneration boots, there's no way I'm going to farm and get something that's better than this. I mean, this is speed boots with extra speed. This is incredible, right? This piece alone is worth hundreds and thousands of energy. And this 12 speed boost is very, very impactful on champions, especially when their gear is already pushing the limits. So either way, that's my rant. That's my rambling on about the Shogun's Grove. It may not be a super difficult dungeon, once they get it fixed, it may not be really very difficult at all. But just because it's not difficult doesn't mean that it's worth doing. Sand Devils is far, far more valuable, in my opinion, at this current moment, than the Shogun's Grove. So we're, we went ahead and talked about this for, I guess, eight minutes or so. And I want to talk about some other things in the game. So first up, we have the uh, new filter system. The new filter system is incredible. I no longer have to worry about, um, where is my Yannicka? Well, Yannicka is right here. This is such a nice feature. Now, I noticed that some of the reserve vault function, like when I'm searching for champions, yesterday I was searching for somebody. I have two copies of Croydon. I spelled his name wrong, so you do have to know how to spell people's name. Um, Croydon, there we go. I had two copies of him. Maybe I didn't select the reserve vault, but either way, he wasn't showing up yesterday. Um, but ultimately, this filter is so, so nice. I cannot tell you how many times on stream I've been looking for a champion, scrolling past it, and I'm like, where is this dude at? I know I have this champion. Looking for him, can't find him. Or the worst situation where I'm looking for the champion. I know I have him. I don't actually have him. I think I do, but I'm searching for what feels like an eternity on stream and just can't find the champion because I don't have him. He's been fed. So this filter system is very, very nice. Very, very much appreciative for that. Now the new champion, Nut, okay? Or Gnut, Newt, whatever you want to call him. Nut is probably the favorite thing amongst most people to call him. But currently this is how I have him built. He's a monster. Good HP, good defense, good speed, most important. You got crit damage pretty high, good accuracy. Um, I'll take him into some areas. I do have him working on a Fire Knight stage uh, six team. Uh, two minutes and 46 seconds. This is actually a pretty neat, team, pretty neat team. It worked well once, but to be honest, I don't know how consistent it's going to be. Maybe we let it run, maybe not. Um, honestly, it's about two minutes long. Um, this was the team, though. Actually, you know what? I don't think I should even show you guys. It's not consistent. I'm not going to get your hopes up. This team's not consistent. I'm not going to show you. Um, it was 2 minutes and 46 seconds the one time it worked. But like I said, it's not super consistent. I had Yakarl in there before. His freezing, reducing the turn meter made it that much better. But we're going to continue some testing. We're going to continue to play around with some stuff and see how this actually works out. Maybe even push it up to stage 10. I don't know. I want to make the gear requirements actually make sense. Now, as far as things like spiders, let's do spiders stage 10 for really the only reason because this is going to look cool. All right. This is not going to kill the boss. But you can definitely make a team around this. It's hard mode stage 10, okay? I did get a recent comment on one of my videos saying, does Newt replace Artak and Mithrala duo? No, um, I don't think he does at all. Um, he could, I don't know, he might be able to duo it, but it's gonna be difficult. Um, dang it, so we're a little too slow there. Let me go ahead and add Arbiter in. But he's not gonna replace uh, Mithrala and Artak by no means. Artak is an incredible champion. Can't be really, can't be replaced. Like. Very, very different different champions. Nuke can be used in Hydra, for sure. Like, you can definitely put him in there, in Hydra, and he shares damage. He wrecks the head that he does that max HP hit to. I mean, it's a triple hitting max HP damage. It is incredible. You have Hex out there. It's going to share the damage, but he's not no HP burn, okay? Now, watch this, okay? This is going to be cool. So, he does a triple max HP hit. Boom, boom, boom. Kills all the spiderlings. So, he just did 10, 20, 30% of the spider's max HP, plus all those little spiderlings, so he did like 60% of the spider's max HP. Now we do this, and then the spider eats the spiderlings. Obviously, it's not gonna be a great situation. We may actually be okay. I wonder if I can actually, I'm not gonna be able to get back around to the turn, I don't think. Uh, let's go do some turn meter boosting. We'll cleanse. This is not really gonna work though. I, I really need her to actually place the hex. So we'll just uh, reset the abilities, turn meter boost again. Um, have him do his A2, big smash with the weekend. Mithrala do the Hex. And then we may actually be able to beat it. It is manual, obviously, but we may actually be able to beat it. 
which is pretty cool. The extra turn that he got may be the difference maker there. Let's see. Here we go. We're coming up on the last one. Actually, sweet. Hopefully, we get a turn here. Cleanse everything. Take a turn, buddy. Here we go. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Beautiful. Beautiful. We'll go ahead and finish it off with Arbiter, maybe. Not quite. Super, super close. Um, can he finish it off? Yes, there we go. Sweet. Newt did 6.5 million. Mithrala did not really 5 million. It was just shared damage. So either way, very, very cool. Um, obviously, fantastic champion. Spider Sage 10 hard. Um, we have Ice Golem. Not going to be great there. He'll just activate the big slam and then GG's. Dragon's Lair definitely can make this work as well. It's just really all about getting to the boss. I did this, but he dies fast. Like, you got to get to the boss. You got to um, be mindful about what's used because... If you're not using your abilities that, you know, do good damage fast, he's going to die. But, like, see your wave clear, get to the boss pretty quickly. Just a team I kind of threw together. N nonetheless, all this is to say, this champion is 100% worth going for. Like, he brings such a unique kit. If you skip him, you're going to regret it. Like, just to be honest, you're going to regret skipping this champion if you do. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, 500,000 damage per hit, it's unheard of. Like, that's like a Krizia, like, like a little tiny Krizia, basically, right? Like a little small version of a Krizia. Obviously, once he does that big multi-hitter, then you're just going to die to the dragon because we don't have any extra poisons to finish this off. But either way, he smacks. He's smacking the dragon crazy hard. Very, very good. Um, we're going to end the battle, though, because obviously we don't have the actual setup to keep him alive. But if we did, dragon would be done and dusted. Obviously, on the lower stages, normal, we go down here to stage 25 hard. It's going to be no problem because he is strong affinity. Matter of fact, if you guys want to see it real quick, maybe we can run it. Let's run it one time. 25 should not be no issue whatsoever. Not that I would ever farm 25, to be honest. I would just do a hard, a hard mode, honestly. Um, but you could do Sage 25. And Sage 20s, he'd be super easy because he just max HP, destroy him because the max HP is not capped on Sage 20s. So very, very different expectations there. But here we go. Boom, Seer clears that wave and get to the dragon. We could turn Mithrala's abilities off except for her A1 ability, honestly. But Nuke comes in, boom, boom. There we go, 300,000 damage. Extra turns, extra turns, extra turns. Might get around to another big A3 before this is over. So we're coming up on the extra, the, uh, another ability. Hopefully we get a big hit in, and then Kaimar resets after that. Decreased defense plus weaken. Boom, 400,000 each time. Sub one minute, can we do it? I don't think so. It's going to be super close. Maybe. Maybe we can. Maybe we can. I need some refresh accessories on him. Refresh stuff would be super cool. Kaimor's just not resetting. He refuses to reset anything. Big boom. There we go. 400,000 damage. Newt coming in with 3.4 million damage. Doing more damage than Seer. And she's the one killing the waves. Obviously, he's a little monster. He's an incredible champion. So guys, go for the fusion. Don't do the Shogun's Grove and enjoy the new filter. I guess that's really all this video is just saying. 15 minutes to say, don't do, do do the fusion, and then enjoy the filter. Guys, with that said, hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know your opinions down below because all this is, at the end of the day, just my opinion. You could have a different one. I'm definitely glad to hear it down in the comment section. But don't forget to like the video, and I'll catch you all in the next one.